بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد and welcome to our next video on the Islamic Knowledge YouTube channel and today we're having a look at a kitab a book that is actually relevant inshallah to ulama as well as non-ulama so scholars and non-scholars can benefit from this book inshallah and it's actually an English book it's really really beneficial and it's something that I want to actually recommend to everyone to actually purchase it's really relevant for our times and our situation um, the turbulent times that we are living in with all the natural disasters emotional disasters physical disasters uh, you know in, uh, uh, you could say spiritual disasters all of these different disasters and calamities that you know as a human being individually we go through and as a community we go through I want to recommend this book and maybe a few more that we'll go through in the next few videos that we could do inshallah so the the title of the book is sacrifice the legacy of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and it's a compilation of hadith about the struggles and hardships of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam written by Sheikh Tamim Ahmadi now I just want to clarify I, I don't even think I need to clarify this but some people do ask this question so I've got to clarify that's just his surname it's not relevant to any a group or anything like that he's a Sunni scholar by Sheikh Tamim Ahmadi um, and he's a scholar of mashallah tremendous talent and you know you can uh, read up more about him and etc you can he's actually online in the sense that he's uh, active on social media at times post some very beneficial points for us to improve our lives etc and i want to kind of just mention to you firstly the the, the index the context uh, contents you could say so it begins with a word of blessing and encouragement then you've got introduction so what he does is he divides the sacrifices of the Prophet Sallallahu into different types and different categories which are definitely very relevant to us so sacrifices in the personal life of the Prophet Sallallahu so personal difficulties struggles that a person goes through for example just wanting to abstain from worldly pleasures uh, the roughness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi spread and pillow so physical difficulties his meals how many times he would eat a day so some of us may not have food every single day on our plate some of us do some of us may not have the food that we want but we still kind of are unhappy with it so this just shows you what our prophet essentially went through for us in terms of his physical life then struggles during the childhood of the beloved prophet awesome so many of us may have lost a father a mother the nabi awesome lost both his mother and his father at a pretty young age um we may have gone through some struggles during our childhood in terms of uh, physical difficulties, emotional difficulties, uh, mental difficulties, uh, spiritual difficulties. All of them you could relate to some aspect of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life. Then his sacrifices in calling to the way of Allah. So perhaps you're someone who's had a pretty good upbringing. He's had a pretty good, uh, you could say, personal life, but in calling towards in calling people towards the path of Allah or in and enduring the journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you've had some difficulties that you've been through and perhaps you can read some of these stories and relate to the life of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you know that can sometimes give you a lot of encouragement and especially by the way I remember just on a personal basis during the covid years or covid period that is actually when I purchased this book and I went through it and it was a time when everyone was in isolation it was a very difficult period in the sense that you there was less human interaction and there was a bit of you could say almost like a loneliness that a lot of people went through uh, even you could say people like even myself I could say that it was it was a moment of self-reflection and a time wherein you kind of appreciate how Allah the Almighty has created people around you and at that time just reading this book gives you so much solace that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also went through a lot of difficulties in the sense that he also lost family members he lost people that he couldn't so many people lost a lot of loved ones during the COVID period this can some this book can sometimes help you to kind of just find some some relevance some kind of connection that with the prophet so maybe he shares that loss with you um in that way you develop more a you could say 
meaning behind your loss, meaning behind your sacrifice. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove all of our sufferings and bring us back to afiyah completely. But then we've got his suffering at the hands of the creation. So Nabi Sallallahu was the greatest of creation. And he was the, you could say, the paragon of Allah the Almighty, the Prophet of Allah. Despite that, he went through a lot of difficulties that Allah the Almighty easily could have removed from him. But with, as they say, diamonds are made under pressure. Uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went through all of those difficulties to make him the person that he became and the prophet that he beca became now becomes more of a sort of relevance for us grief and personal loss experienced by the prophet sallam his endurance in worship and devotion sickness and the final days of the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then the conclusion and what he does is for every hadith essentially so he's got these sections that is really nicely you know designed in the sense that it's really easy to read it's not jam packed with words there's a is big fonts you could say a big font that really helps the footnotes are not absolutely just jam packed uh, so the hadith is presented first so mujahadatu sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi tahammul al mashaqi lillahi ta'ala he struggles in bearing difficulties for the sake of allah then the hadith is presented then the translation of the hadith and then a short commentary so it's not going to bore you it's not going to be a too long commentary where you get lost in all the differences of opinion no it's just relevant to your life relevant to something you might have been through and kind of how to relate it to nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam i just want to uh, you know presents maybe some important points uh, on page 31 for example there's a nice hadith here um, uh, there's a hadith here about Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that Abu Talha says shakawna ila rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aljua wa rafa'na an butunina an hajarin hajarin wa farafa'a rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an hajarain that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we complained to him that you know we're very hungry and we all had a stone attached to our stomach and which is what the Arabs would do when they were very hungry Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his hunger was double the hunger of the sahaba and that was from you know you could say min Allah as a test and he had to put two stones to kind of uh, cover up for that hunger so this he says here the writer he writes in his commentary which I thought was very nice he says he suffered twice the amount of his followers he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the first and foremost in doing what needed to be done thereby setting an example for all of his followers contrast his example to the so-called leaders of today who sit in comfort and send common man off send the common man off to die for their greedy materialistic motives and this is what makes this is what I like about uh, these comments because they show how we saw some wasn't just a prophet, wasn't just the greatest human being. He was the greatest leader and he was, a, you could say, a political leader as well who showed even the political leaders of today of how to behave as a leader. You suffer always more than what you're, what you're asking from them. So today, you know, the laborer, you could say, the person who's doing the work, he does all the work while it's the prime minister or the president drives the, you know, most eloquent or most beautiful car you could say uh, and he kind of enjoys himself he has loads of meetings yes but he's living pretty much a comfortable life there's a bit of pressure yes but it's not it's not the level of physical labor that the average man in his uh, country is having to go through whereas Nabi Sallallahu went through the pangs and pains of all of his companions and that is how he became the leader that he became and his legacy lives on even today uh, there's another one here and uh, Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu says qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laqad ukhiftu fi allahi wa ma yukhafu ahadun wa laqad uthitu fi allahi wa ma yu'tha ahadun wa laqad atat aliyya thalathuna min bayni yawmin wa laylatin wa mali wa li bilalin ta'amun yakuluhu dhu kabidin illa shay'un yuwarihi ibtu bilal that you know the, the pangs and the kind of uh, hunger that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through he says verily I have been threatened in the path of Allah like no other and I have been harmed in the path of Allah like no other Third 30 days and nights would pass in which neither Bilal nor I had anything that a living creature could eat uh, except a small portion that Bilal would hide under his arm. And this is kind of really relatable to us in our lives as well in the sense that we sometimes have all the food in the world and we still complain. Uh, and that's, that includes me as well many times. Allah uh, forgive us all and protect us from complaining. But look at this. In this utterance, Mullah Ali Al-Qadi says, the Prophet ﷺ is simply relating his condition. He's not complaining. He is proclaiming Allah's bounty upon him for enabling him to have patience. So even the patience that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi would have, he's thanking Allah for that. It is also a consolation for the Ummah to help them tolerate any of the hardships that they may experience. And then there's one here on page 64, which I thought, you know, if a person is re reverting, a person who is a non 
Muslim and then he becomes a Muslim, this chapter is so relevant for you. The struggles of the Prophet ﷺ in delivering the message and the backlash he faced from his people. I mean, every person who's going through any difficulty will find some form of relationship with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi through that difficulty because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi went through something similar. So for example, when he accepted prophethood, when he became a prophet, his his community banished him and they essentially, you know, they, they chucked him out and they, they were not willing to accept his message. So here as well, I mean, by the way, sometimes people think, well, he went through all the difficulties, but he knew he was a prophet. So does that really? No, there are so many examples of the Prophet ﷺ going through difficulties even before becoming a prophet, in the process of becoming a prophet. Remember, he's just a he's just a normal person at this point in the sense that he doesn't know he's going to be given this huge responsibility. And even then he's being told by, you could say, uh, waraqa that you know what, they're going to chuck you out. They, when you preach this message, they are going to chuck you out. And then he says, um, uh, you know, uh, he, the, the, that hadith has come in a previous chapter, but in this one, he's preaching to the people uh, and they are saying, أرأيتكم, uh, he's saying, أرأيتكم لو أخبرتكم أن خيلا بالوادي تريد أن تغير عليكم أكنتم مصدقية قالوا نعم. He tells them, would you believe me if I told you all of these things are going to happen to you? And, uh, you know, I were to say that there's a group that's going to come and attack you. They believe him. They say, we believe you. You speak the truth. But then when he tells them that, what about this message that I want you to accept? They all say, no, we're not accepting that. And Abu Lahab, his own uncle says, Tabbat laka sa'ir al-yawm. Ali hadha jama'atana. He curses him. I mean, how many people accept Islam and their parents don't really accept them anymore and mashallah some do and their parents are completely fine with it but i'm just saying for those who don't have that acceptance from your family you can relate to nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam i mean he he went through what you went through uh, he all his family members also kind of get, basically chucked him out and did not accept him but allah accepted his message and sent it all over the world so in in many ways this book is a book shidda to huznihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala faqdi ummihi wa tadhakkurihi iyyaha so many of us may have lost a mother um, so the severity of how Nabi Sallallahu loss of his mother affected him and how, how, how he used to remember her, that can sometimes be a form of consolation for a person as well. It's a great gift to a person if a person's basically been through something or is going through something and inshallah Allah make them come out of it as a stronger person and with full afia, then this gift could be something that you could give them. It's called Sacrifice, the Legacy of Our Beloved Prophet Sallallahu I'll try to put the link in the description to purchase the book if you do want it. And it's a fantastic kitab. Inshallah, I do hope you benefited from this video. I I hope if you know if this book is something you're looking for, I hope you purchase it. I hope you benefit from it. If you want to give it to someone as a gift, I think it's a fantastic gift to give as well. And um, if you did like the video, then maybe share it with someone. You share it with maybe with someone who may need this book. Uh, who knows? Maybe that be, may be a source of reward for me as well. Jazakumullah khaira for watching this video, and I hope you do subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Jazakumullah khaira. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.